You're listening to Choose FI Radio. The blueprint for financial independence lives here. If you're looking to unlock the secrets to financial independence and early retirement, you're in the right place. Stay tuned and join a community of like-minded people who are getting off the hamster wheel and taking control of their lives in the pursuit of financial independence. Choose FI, your home for financial independence online. Okay, welcome to the show. Today we have Joel from Phi180.com and he is our first repeat guest. And this is super cool because Joel just released an article called The Milestones of Phi that was released literally within the last several weeks. And it was one that Brad and I were incredibly excited about because one, we hadn't seen anything like this in the Phi blogosphere up to this point. And two, it provided the perfect contrast to the Dave Ramsey baby steps, which while they are very nice in the enclosure of getting out of debt, they really don't provide much value to someone that is pursuing FI. And we needed a new set of metrics, or as Joel is going to call them, and we will call them going forward, milestones, to really track your progress, to stay motivated on this journey, to get excited about the little wins along the way. And FI is essentially the master's degree of personal finance. If Dave Ramsey was the kindergarten or the bachelor's degree, FI is the master's degree. It fills in all the blanks and explains the why to your choice. So today, I'm incredibly excited to get a chance to have this conversation. And as usual, I have Brad here with me in the studio. How you doing, Brad? I am doing quite well, Jonathan. Yeah, this is exciting. Joel is one of my favorite people in the FI community, so always happy to talk to him in general. And yeah, after he published this article, it was just an absolute no-brainer to get him on. So, Joel, thank you for being here. Hey, guys. Good to be back. So, Joel, what's been going on with you since the last time we spoke? Yeah, last time we spoke, we had just gotten rid of that rental property, the uh, rental from hell, and we turned around and took the proceeds from that. And we paid off the mortgage on the house we're living in now, which was great. So we are like truly debt free now, not a dollar of debt, which is pretty awesome. Wow. Uh, And yeah, since then, I've just been slowly working towards uh, our our FI date. We recently published that I'm going to be pulling the trigger, I believe in January is what the Mad Scientist projections are showing now. So we're real excited about that and kind of moving towards a transition mode where I'm going to be fully FI and then uh, Alexis is going to be kind of ramping down from work. So we're taking all the steps to get ready for that. And it's pretty exciting. I'm going to be blogging about each step of the way as I progress into the actual early retirement waters. I'm excited about that. Yeah, that's really cool. So I'm at your homepage right now. And yeah, it says FI Countdown, January 31st, 2018. That's incredible. So you're basing that on the mad scientist projections at his Phi laboratory. Is that 4%, 3%? Yeah, so we've been tracking on the Phi laboratory. If you guys haven't tried this, it's it's pretty awesome. We've been using that tool for about two years now. And it's it's a little conservative in the way that it's calculating everything, but it kind of has some parameters you can go in and tweak and set it up just how you like. And so we've been using that. We've also been comparing with FireSim and a few other tools, but it's looking like we're going to hit that milestone early next year. And that's assuming that the market continues what it's doing right now, which there's no guarantee. Pete just recently talked about the next recession is coming. So who knows, but that's the current projection. Yeah, that's cool. So talk us through real Real quick, a lot of people have questions about the 4% or 3% or what, whatever it may be. I know we're going to have Big Earn from Early Retirement Now on to talk about safe withdrawal and, and all that kind of real technical stuff. But can you give us high level, like what are you basing your FI number on? Is it 4% or is it something more conservative? Yeah, so we're using 4%. To me, actually, the 4% rule is actually a little conservative in and of itself, because if you look at the Trinity study, or if you look at the tables and the simple path to wealth that Jim puts at the back of the book showing where the 4% rule came from, the 96% success rate actually is considering a 50% bonds portfolio, which is very conservative. When you move it to something like uh, 25% bonds, 75% stocks, that success rate actually goes towards... 100%. It's much higher uh, with the 4% rule. So to me, 4% is actually conservative all by itself. I've gotten into all kinds of discussions and debates with other people who say, no, the way way that uh, markets are moving right now, we actually need to be 
moving towards more of like a 3% rule where it's a more conservative poll. But to me, actually, 4% is perfect for us. And actually, uh, where I talk about in the Milestones article, this concept of FlexFi, which is based around a 5% withdrawal rate, which I think can work too, as long as you're flexible. There are a couple things that stood out to me. One, I love that you're actually publishing your numbers right now. And I know that your annual spending, you're shooting for $25,000 a year. And that's very cool. And I think that's very doable. But one of the things that makes it possible is that you have no mortgage. So it is $25,000 of spending, right? That's correct. No mortgage, no interest, no other uh, expenses other than just the actual meat of the expenses. So, and we're actually still trying to get to 25 each year. We, we inch a little bit closer this year. We finally just broke under 30. So it's a, it's a moving target. Right. But based on that $625,000 would get you to the 4% rule. That's correct. So you don't need to be a millionaire to be fi. Absolutely not. A million dollars is way more than I would need. And, and who knows, I've heard from, you know, everybody at camp saying, Oh, you'll hit a million without even trying. It just happens because you're frugal and because of the way that you save and everything else. But that would be a lot of extra gravy <laughs> if it did, I, if it did happen, but totally unnecessary. I, I love this. You had this little paragraph down at the bottom, but it, it, it explicitly states something that I was trying to verbalize to someone else the other day. I like to think of it like this. I need to save $625,000 to purchase a magic money-making machine that will print me $25,000 checks once per year, every year, forever. The law of thermodynamics may forbid perpetual motion machines, but luckily there's no law of finance that prevents perpetual money machines. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the key to it. Once, once you get there, that, that money is working for you and your work becomes completely optional, which is, that's the exciting part. That's what FI does. It simplifies this concept. That's essentially what we're doing. We're trying to purchase ourselves by, by living a slightly more optimized lifestyle. We're trying to purchase a magic money-making machine that we have in our back pocket for the rest of our lives, which allows us to put time as a tool that we can use in our other pocket, which yeah. makes our life awesome in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Yeah, that's exactly it. And it's funny because I know some friends when I'm discussing these concepts, sometimes I'll get challenged by, well, aren't you sacrificing a lot by saving so hard and having such a high savings rate? Aren't aren't you sacrificing other things you could be doing? And the way that I think of it is I say, no, I'm actually saving for the ultimate luxury purchase, right? I'm going to buy this $625,000 $625,000 money-making machine. It's the, it's the ultimate luxury purchase because I want to have that so that I don't have to work, so that I can do things on my own schedule. And, and so to me, that's like, I, I can easily not spend on everything else so that I could purchase this really great luxury item. That's so cool, Joel. I absolutely love that. And yeah, I mean, I hear, I do hear that often is, aren't you depriving yourself? And yeah, that's almost exactly how I put it, just slightly different words. So I think I may use your perpetual money-making machine from now on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm buying 30 plus years of my life back. And all that I'm giving up is maybe a trip to Jamaica and some fancy dinners every year. And I would argue I could get the trip to Jamaica with travel rewards, right? So just <laughs> sure. being a little bit smarter. So I'm giving up a couple of fancy dinners. And like you talked about on our other episode, some random purchases at Target that you can't even explain what you spent the money on. That's yep. the difference, right? We're quote unquote sacrificing, but we're actually taking back three decades of our lives from mindless drudgery sitting in an office and they're just getting to waste some money at Target. Isn't that a pretty easy choice? It's obvious to me. Well, well actually, it wasn't always It wasn't. Obvious. It wasn't. No, <laughs> it wasn't and that's the cool obvious, part. But now, now it just seems so so obvious once you once you see it, you know, once you get there. So we want to set this up for our community. And essentially what we want to accomplish with this conversation is once you're on this five path, you made the choice and you're and you're rocking forward towards your destination. What are the little metrics that you can get excited about along the way to tell you that you're making progress to confirm for you that you're getting closer to your goal? Because there's a lot of little wins along the way to saying, I have purchased my money making machine and I'm there. What are the things that you can get excited about every single step of the way? And the obvious thing to compare and contrast this to is the Dave Ramsey baby steps. Now, let's just for the sake of comparison, let's go through those real quick. Uh, Baby step number one was get $1,000 to start an emergency fund. Baby step two is to pay off all the debt, including the debt snowball. Baby step three was three to six months of expenses and savings. Baby step four was invest 15% of your income into one of these tax deferred or Roth IRA accounts. And then it was college funding for kids, pay off your home early, build wealth and give. That was step seven. That's fine. That really doesn't do anything for us once we've decided we want to pursue FI. We're already basically past all 
all that point or we've identified that, but we want to know what are the little wins that we want to hit along the way to reach our goal of financial independence. So Joel, where should we start with this? Yeah, I think I think the first real milestone you know, to, to FI is you're debt free. Maybe, maybe you've made that $1 net worth where you're, you're in the green finally. And I think that's like the, the real starting point towards the actual savings end of the journey. Now that can take some time for people if you've got a lot of debt that you have to pay off. But I think that's kind of where my article is starting from, which is the, the green net worth, the positive net worth. Yeah. So just to clarify, positive net worth and debt free can be different items, right? Especially if we're talking like I have a mortgage personally, and that's sure. that's a separate argument that we can talk about another time. But yeah, you're saying positive net worth, right? Yep. And along with that, can we maybe go ahead and put a line in the sand and say it's debt free except for the house? Is that is that fair? You've gotten rid of all other consumer debt? Yeah, I, possibly. I mean, you can still potentially have a positive net worth and still have student loans, um, you know, depending on how, how much you save. But yeah, I, I would say for the most part, I'm very debt averse. And so I like the idea of debt free, you know, except the mortgage. I, I, I like that idea. And let's just call that, let's use some terms that we get from the FI community. That's when your financial freedom clock starts. That's a go curry cracker term. Your financial freedom clock starts when you've gotten rid of all of your consumer debt, except for maybe a mortgage. So we can put that in asterisks beside that. Yep. I agree with that. All right. What's next? Yeah. So after publishing the article, I got a lot of feedback about wouldn't it be great if we got some more early milestones. Because in my article, I kind of go through more milestones in the second half. And so, for example, Gwen from Fiery Millennials, she said, hey, you forgot, you know, your first hundred thousand dollars where personal capital starts to call you and want you to invest in them. I said, oh, that's that's a great one, you know, because that's a big hit that six figure milestone. So that's a that's a big one. Let's Uh, let's pause on that. I love that. So we love personal capital. Most of the five bloggers do as a great way for you to track all of your different investment vehicles in one particular place. And if you don't already have one of those, it's generally recognized as one of the best places to track all of your accounts in one place. And we've set up an easy link to get a free account for that. Just go to choosefi.com slash PC and you can set that up. And yeah, Joel is exactly right. They will call you to set up a a free consultation once you reach 100,000. So be aware that that will happen. But yeah, Jonathan and I both use personal capital. It's a really solid tracking tool. But wait, that's your milestone. You know, you've made it to the first milestone when you get that phone call. So that is an objective marker. Everybody needs to set up that account. That way you can get your first milestone in the bag when you get that call. It's hilarious. But now that is absolutely documented, that is the first milestone of the FI community. Personal capital phone call. Yep. There you go. (laughs) There you go. You know, around the same time, depending on your uh, your number and how much you need to save for FI, around the same time, you're you're probably going to have that that FU money under your belt, which is one of the milestones that I spell out uh, in the article. So for the wife and I, our FU money came in. We, we found it to be about two years, two and a half years maybe of annual spending. And for us, I wanted to contrast it a little bit from the emergency fund that Dave Ramsey talks about. So the emergency fund is really focused on having three to six months of your essential spends, right? This isn't everything. This doesn't include Netflix. This doesn't include, you know, all of the non-essential items. But the FU money for the wife and I, at least, to us, that's one or two years of everything. So non-essentials. Uh, this is where you can now take a leisurely year or two, walk away from your employer or your career and, and do something else and, and have no pressure on you. Uh, and so that's kind of, a, in the article, I kind of compare them side by side. And so the FU money is a much more luxurious milestone than the uh, Ramsey Emergency Fund. So yeah, the, the first few milestones might happen around the same dollar amount depending on your FI number. So if, if you have, if your FI mo- number is a million dollars and your FU money comes in at around two years of your spend, two and a half years, that's 10% of your FI number. So that's, that is around $100,000. So to us, that's what we wanted to contrast on, on the blog post is that this is a more luxurious milestone than the emergency fund that Dave Ramsey writes about. Now, we really haven't gone too much into depth about FU money, but it is a concept that the more contrarian FI community prefers uh, to talk about. You're probably not going to see FU money discussed on the Dave Ramsey podcast. Uh, (laughs) The cool thing about it is it rests control of your life away from 
your employer and gives it back to you to make decisions that are in your best interest. And frankly, there is an emotional component to this that will create some extreme variability in what this number actually is. Some people, it may be like you just said, this exact two years of expenses, but the psychological power that you get doesn't have to be reached by you explicitly having two years of expenses. It could be having three months of expenses, six months of expenses. FU money is just you having enough money set aside to essentially be able to have a more powerful position at your job where if they are making unreasonable requests of your time or if they're putting you in a position where you have to choose between maybe your family, your relationships or your job, you have the ability to make a choice that's in your best interest. And as long as you feel comfortable making that choice, you have the power back. And so FU money is very distinct to the FI community, and it's a topic that is its own podcast. This is by no means the final explanation, but it is absolutely a milestone of FI. And it actually may be one of the first milestones because you just having some savings, not being paycheck to paycheck, is essentially there's a huge difference there. And ultimately, everybody needs to be pursuing this. And I would even make the case after thinking about this that it's FU money first. And then now the milestone number two would be personal capital phone call because F U money is the immediate win that you have by having some margin in your life. Yeah, that's how it went for the wife and I, because our number is lower, 625,000. As soon as we saved 60 grand, we were happy with our FU number. It's really dependent on what your number is. Uh, what What is your annual spend? Yeah, I like that a lot because a lot of this, and, and we talk about this on the podcast all the time, a lot of FI comes down to personal preference. Just like from my perspective, at least, there are no set rules. So we mentioned Mr. Money Mustache and the bicycle riding. And that is wonderful for him. And that is really one of his bedrock foundational principles. But for me, in my life, bicycle riding just doesn't work perfectly. So does that mean that I'm not in the FI community? Does that mean I'm not even mustachian? I would argue no. I think I follow the vast majority, but you have to pick and choose what you value. So I would even argue with this FU money, it could, like Jonathan's saying, it could be dramatically less depending on the person. If it gives you some degree of certainty, some degree of power in your life, that might be $20,000, right? That might be a couple months of expenses. Joel, I'm with you personally that for me, it would be a couple of years. So I wouldn't consider that I had any degree of FU money unless I had, I would say, one to three years worth of expenses saved up in, in my total net worth. So that's that would be my FU money. It just needs to be enough to where you're completely comfortable walking away from an employer that doesn't treat you right or that isn't working for you and not having to worry about how am I going to pay these bills? What am I going to do? You can leisurely take your time, find your next job, your next endeavor. And, and that's what the FU money is all about. All right, Joel, what is the next milestone that we're looking for? So we've covered the first two and we can make the case that they're interchangeable, uh, one yeah. and two. But but now we're, we're past that and we're looking at milestone number three. Yeah, so this is a big one. The, uh, the half fi mark. So <laughs> this one was huge for the wife and I. Once you hit half fi what you're essentially doing is you've saved up half that number 12 and a half times your annual spend. So you have 12 and a half years of spending. And what that does is it allows you to kind of really have a good pin in the journey of, of where you are right now. And so a lot of people would assume that, okay, you've saved up half your fine number. That means you're halfway done with your journey. But actually, because it's not linear, you're, you're actually closer to two thirds done with your journey. You've passed the, the majority of your journey already. And of course, that depends on the market and it depends on your portfolio. But for us, we hit half fine. We were more than two thirds done with our journey, which is really cool. And that's what I show in the post where I show some of those graphics that kind of show the charts and, and what, what it looks like from a time perspective. So for us, this was significant as well, because my wife and I both work full time jobs at this point. And so that's kind of like a psychological point where you say, all right, one of us could stop completely. You know, one of us is actually phi in the relationship, which is a, a fun way of looking at it. But for us, it was really just seeing, wow, we have passed more than half of this journey already. And even though we only have half the number we need. We actually have maybe a third of the time left on the journey. So this can be a very motivational milestone. Like for the wife and I, this was like, okay, we've, we've been saving for a while. And this was something we celebrated because this was just a, a really big milestone. Joel, for a lot of people out there who aren't math majors, can you explain the concept of what you're talking about with it, it's not linear? Yeah. So the idea here is that the earlier part of your journey is going to take longer to save for. 
because as your money starts making more money, those additional dollars start working for you. Interest starts to compound and every dollar that you add kind of accelerates this process. And depending on the market, this can this can be seen dramatically. So in the past two or three years, we've actually had some really, really great market returns. So I'm seeing this maybe even exaggerated from what the average 7% uh, return on the market would be. But yeah, so what that means is you've, you've now saved up half your money, but you've only got a quarter of the way to go in terms of time. So uh, because now all those extra dollars are working even harder, making more money for you on the second half of the journey. So you're going to get there much quicker. To me, the, the place that we need to spend a little bit extra I'm talking about is just the value of time. We keep coming back to it. That is essentially what we're trying to recapture. And Warren Buffett in a recent conference that was mentioned by one of our previous guests, Mr. 1500, he was telling us that Warren Buffett was taking this Q&A session and this one fellow asked him about what books would you recommend, Warren? And Warren looked at him and, and after maybe giving an answer, he ultimately said, the thing to me that is more valuable than my entire fortune, I would trade you my entire fortune right now, give it to you in order to be 25 years old again. Because yeah. time works for you. And if we can get this to second generation five, we can capture their imagination and make them realize that it's not having the car with the 30 inch rims. It's not mortgaging your future so you can have all the stuff. Time is what you're running out of. If you can make a few right choices early on, your story will write itself. The math works for you. And once you get on the compound interest train, your money will work for you. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's so important to get that started early. The earlier you set up, that Vanguard account, get that index fund set up, the earlier you start contributing, it just really does work magic in the later years. And I bet you, Warren, if you were 25 years old again, he'd be doing index funds the whole way yeah. through. I believe that's what he said to, uh, in one of his shareholder letters, The what he's going to do for his wife and for his estate is just take the money after he passes away and put it into broad-based index funds, like 90% into index funds. Yeah, that's exactly right. He said 90% of his estate would go to the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund. Sounds like a good plan to me. <laughs> yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, and to put a cap on that, I love the idea that you're half by, and by extension, uh, one of, if you're married, one of one spouse or the other is now at five. The other one, you got to stay in the grind. But the other one of you, you guys are good to go. Yeah, that's a fun way of looking at it. We both kept on working after that milestone to get to five quicker, but it takes some pressure off. And psychologically, it kind of builds up that level up mentality. I know, Jonathan, you like to gamify some of this and think of it as, you know, leveling up in a game. Well, you, you've you done that. You've hit that point where one of you is now Phi and, and can kind of take some pressure off and kind of really give you a sense of power of what you've accomplished. Yeah, I had this visual image as you were saying that of like Sonic the Hedgehog flying down the path and then hitting some sort of boulder and the coins going everywhere, you know, so like yeah. <laughs> road, road bumps on the way. <laughs> yeah, they just put Sonic for free on uh, on the App Store. I, I downloaded the other day, the original. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> All right. So milestone one was FU money or alternatively milestone two was the call from personal capital. And then milestone three was half five. So now we are on milestone number four, lean five. Tell us about it, Joel. Yeah. So lean five is actually pretty cool. Uh, the wife and I actually just crossed this milestone uh, earlier this year. This was in, I believe, March or April that we passed this. And the idea behind LeanFi is that you have enough money now to stop working forever and be five forever as long as you cut out all of the discretionary elements of your budget. So for the wife and I, we, we looked over our budget, kind of ran through everything. We saw that about 30% of our spending was discretionary. The Netflix, the entertainment, the, the movies, uh, theme park tickets, that kind of stuff, travel. And so that's not stuff that you technically need in your life. It's obviously the stuff that can make life fun and, and enjoyable. But what it means is when you hit LeanFi, you've got the confidence that if you needed to, you could stop working. And it's like having an emergency fund that will last forever. Right. Because the idea of the emergency fund is that it's just covering your essentials. So this is like an emergency fund that would last forever. And so what that does is it makes you realize, wow, no matter what happens to me, I've got my housing covered. I've got my food covered. I've got a roof over my head. No matter no matter what happens, those are covered for the rest of my life. And so to me, this is the perfect time. If you're somebody who doesn't like your career, doesn't like your job, and you want to start something new, you want to take a plunge and, and really start something new on your own, you can go ahead and do it, right? Just live lean, cut out the discretionary stuff for a year or two while you're working on whatever you're 
your side hustle, whatever your next gig is. Oh, you stole and- my thunder from me. I was going to go to the <laughs> side hustle. Lean yeah. by is perfect for the side hustle. This is it. This is that point in time. You can take that plunge, right? The, you've, you've got it. You've got your non-discretionary funding completed forever. That's, that's the idea of lean fi. Super powerful. And while I want to stress to people that you do not have to be at lean fi in order to start a side hustle, you can start it that's anywhere true. along the way. Lean fi is the place at which you can do it with no risk. It is, right. it is perfect. Yep. Yep. Instead of the person trying to make ends meet while working on their passion, once you hit this point, you can just take your leisurely time, you know, work at whatever that passion is as much as you want. And assuming that it will generate some income eventually, you'll be able to get more of the discretionary things back uh, in your life at that point. But yeah, for us, that that number was about 70% FI because that directly related to how much of our spending is discretionary. Your number might be different. So on the article, you said it's $437,000, which is less than yeah. a half a million. So you don't even need a half a million dollars to get to lean FI. That's right. Yep. That's all it would take. And you know, because of the way the Trinity study works, about half the people who do the 4% rule, who get all the way to five, they have way more money than they ever needed. They actually end up with portfolios twice as big as what they what they needed for five. So 50% of the time, the 4% rule is way too much. It's a less popular way of looking at the 4% rule, but it's still true from, from a statistics standpoint. So for those that are more risk seeking, for those that aren't afraid maybe to go back to work one day if, if they hit a worst case scenario, or uh, those that just kind of want to make a change in their life, lean five could be it. That, that could that could be all you need. And I want to stress to our audience that this is not the ultimate unpacking of the 4% rule. So for those of you that want to critique something that we're saying about the 4% rule and give us another perspective on it, this is not the show for that. But I think that what Joel is saying still is valuable in the context of just once you have $437,000, you can absolutely pursue your side hustle without the fear of what if it doesn't work. Absolutely. And that 437, just to be clear, is based on your personal fine number. So we're not telling yep. every everyone in the audience, once you hit 437, you're at lean five. That's based on your your annual expenses of 25,000, right? No, no, we are. Everybody needs to do exactly <laughs> what Joel's doing. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be different for everybody. For us, it was 70% of our FI number. And even that percentage might be different for you. Brad, for example, if you find that discretionary spending is half of your money, maybe you've got a lot more flexibility than I do. Well, then your lean fine number could be much smaller. It, it really depends on what, what portion of your expenses are considered uh, discretionary. I want to do a full podcast on people that have made wildly unconventional choices on how to live their life and reduce their core expenses. So we are going to feature these really cool ideas of people that are that have figured out a way to get their core expenses under $10,000 a year. It is absolutely possible. I'm not telling you to do it, but it does help to see what choices other people have made so that then you can figure out where in this moving target of a playing field you want to be. And Joel sounds like he has a very similar lifestyle to mine and Brad's once you get rid of the mortgage, but you can certainly be in a much higher bracket or in a much lower bracket. There is room for everybody on this field. Yeah. I think of Jacob from Early Retirement Extreme. I think he was what, living in San Francisco for under $10,000 a year? Yeah, it's intense. It's certainly intense. Yeah, (laughs) but it's important to know it's possible. It is possible. I I agree with you. Exactly. (laughs) Yep. One super cool thing about LeanFi that you kind of mentioned is at this time, for the first time ever, your dollars are working potentially harder than your income at this point. It's it's, it's, it's really (laughs) cool, right? The point at which your returns of your portfolio is actually more than what you're contributing to your investment vehicles. Yeah, so that only works on good months, right? In, in the market, it's not going to be every month that your money is earning more than you. But there were plenty of them that I started realizing. The first one happened right around Lean Fi, where my my portfolio increased in a given month more than the contributions that I made from working. And that's powerful, right? That means wow, your dollars worked harder than you did that month. And so that's a very humbling feeling. <laughs> I want a new milestone for that. So we got Lean Fi. And then I think we need to figure out a new name for that one. Uh, yeah. The milestone where your money's working harder than you are and 24 hours a day. Yeah, yeah. I think I called that the crossover point in yeah. the article. I don't know if that's a good name. but That's that, it. That's yeah, it. that's cool. Let's carve that out as a separate milestone. Yeah. 
All right, we'll build this thing as we go. Yeah. All right, Joel. So looking at your article here, the next milestone is called FlexFi. Why don't you tell us about that one? Yeah. So kind of all of these milestones so far have been calibrated, if you will, to the 4% rule where Fi is I'm defining it as 25x, 25 times your annual spend. Or if you've got real estate or if you've got other passive income, it's the equivalent to having a passive portfolio that could generate your annual spend in passive income at the 4% rule. So what FlexFi does is it kind of loosens that a little bit. So instead of being Fi, which is at 25 times your annual spend, FlexFi is at 20 times your annual spend. This would correspond roughly to a 5% rule where you would be withdrawing 5% per year. And so the idea and the reason that it's called FlexFi is that this is the point where you could call yourself financially independent as long as you are flexible and you remain flexible. And so what does that mean? That means if the market is having a really bad year, you're going to cut back on your travel. You're going to cut back on some of your discretionary expenses. It means you have flexibility in your spending from year to year. There are some people who, who might not have that flexibility or don't have any type of side hustle or any other income coming in. But for those that do, the flex by milestone is kind of the perfect time where you could potentially pull the early retirement trigger as long as you stay alert and flexible. And that's kind of what these later milestones start getting into here is this idea that the RE, the retiring early portion of FIRE, can be dissociated from the actual numbers. So you could retire early at lean phi, at flex phi, at phi, as we're going to get into these other milestones, but it just depends on your situation and your flexibility. And so that's kind of what the flex phi milestone is to me. For us, it was $500,000. And so it's that point where, yeah, we could actually pull the trigger on early retirement here as long as we remain flexible. And I think one of the things I say in the post is that this is ideal for people who are a little more risk seeking, who don't need a sure thing, but are ready to take the plunge on something new. And the worst case scenario that I like to talk about is everybody else's everyday scenario, which is you might have to go back to work, maybe part time, maybe doing something more fun. Uh, but that's your literal worst case scenario. That is awesome. And people come to me and, and ask me, well, what if the market takes a downturn? Well, you're still in infinitely better shape than everybody else that doesn't have any savings, right? Exactly. You're in fantastic exactly. shape. And now this is where you use the same amount of creativity that you've been using this whole point to turn up your hustle and either go back to work. Oh, what a horrible thing, right? Everybody yeah. else has been at work this whole time. Now it's an yeah. option. You're going to go back to work for a short period of time. Or That's, you can start yeah. using some of the other tools that you have in your tool bag, like the side hustle or geo yeah. arbitrage, right? Exactly. And you know what? One of the things that actually got me to write this entire article is because so many people think of Phi as like this one, it's, it's the only milestone. And if you're a dollar under your Phi number, oh, you have none of the benefits of Phi. And then, oh, you've got that dollar, you hit Phi, now you have all the benefits of Phi. And so what I'm trying to do with these milestones is show that it's it's actually not one finish line. It's a smooth continuum where your benefits that you get and the power that you get along the way just keep on increasing at each milestone that you cross. So it's not this binary cross this one line and then you have all of Phi's benefits and then you, you go back under it and you've lost it. It's really not like that. So, Joel, just reading from your article here. So this is FlexFi. You're saying it's 20 times your annual expenses, which put another way would be a 5% withdrawal rate, right? So, That's correct. So this, according to the Trinity study, has an 82% chance of success, even if you are completely inflexible with your withdrawals. That's so right. And so if you are able to handle a little bit more risk, this could be more than enough for you. There's an 82% chance that you're actually fi at this milestone, is what that means. Yeah, that's really powerful. So 82% chance you're at phi when you've reached flex phi, according to Joel. So I like that a lot. And so that's according to the Trinity study, uh, where <laughs> you have a 25% a twenty five percent bonds and 75% stocks broad-based portfolio. And again, the flexibility there is, is what's really important, right? Is if you're a little bit flexible, if you have any way to make additional money, if you don't mind theoretically going back to work, if something catastrophic happened, well, and you might be at Phi when you're at 20 times your annual expenses. So again, it, it's just kind of approaching this mentally from a different perspective. Not that, okay, I need a hundred percent chance of being at Phi and never having to work one minute again. 
right? So, I mean, that's a very inflexible way of looking just at life in general. And most of us can't get 100% certainty of anything. But that's pretty cool to potentially claw back another couple of years from your working life, right? Like that's another cool way of looking at this is you have an 82% chance of success and you may claw back a couple extra years of your life. So that's not nothing, right? Yeah, no, that's significant. And this milestone is especially significant to me because one of the things that people talk to me about is, wow, you're getting ready to pull this phi trigger in January. And so they said, well, what if the recession hits like right, right as you're getting ready to pull that trigger? And I said, well, then I'll, maybe I'll dip down to flex five, but that's still going to be good enough for me. And so it's, you have this confidence in knowing, okay, all that means is that my percent success potential has gone from, okay, near a 98 plus down to 82. And so you say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to deal with that. I'm willing to deal with that worst case scenario where one day I might have to do some side work. And I think a lot of us here in the financial independence community, we do tend to have side hustles. We do tend to have passions that just on their own nature will end up making us some money in our 30 plus year retirements. And I think the one thing to point out is you still have all the money from the previous milestones. You have the money, the FU money, essentially that was in your bank account. So if a storm were to happen and were to affect your monster portfolio, you don't have to touch that because you have these reserves that will allow you to just cash flow your life as you need to. And you can use the same amount of hustle and creativity that you're using now to essentially, like we like to say, have a backup plan for your backup plan. This isn't a one-way door. It's a turnstile. It's a rotating swivel door. And you get to make choices based on the environment that you find yourself in at any given point in time. Yeah, exactly. All right, Joel, I think we have a very large milestone coming up next. Wait, hang on. We got to catch people up to where we are. Oh, so, boom. yep, hang on. Let's go back through the pillars again. We want these to be fresh in your mind, especially when I start getting the T-shirts made. Joel, I'm going to get a Lean Fi T-shirt made and send to you. Uh, but milestone nice. number one, nice. the, the personal capital phone call. Milestone number two, FU money. Milestone number three, half Fi. Milestone number four, Lean Fi. Milestone number five, the crossover point. Milestone number six, Flex Fi. And then, Joel, why don't you go ahead and set us up? for milestone number seven. Sure. So this would be your financial independence milestone, the one that gets the most publicity and the one that gets the most attention as defined by 25 times your, your annual spend. So this is it. You've saved up 25 times your annual spend. You have a 96% chance of success based on the 4% rule. If you have a 50-50 stock bond portfolio, if you, if you lower those bonds down to 25%, your success rate goes up closer to 100. And this is it. You've achieved financial independence. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean this is the point where you're going to stop working. What this just means is that you've crossed that line, right? You, you've hit the FI in the FIRE uh, acronym. And so what this means is you're, you're there. You could stop working. All the work that you do at this milestone after this milestone is completely optional. If the alarm clock goes off on Monday, and you go to work, that was completely optional, right? It's all just for extra cushion at that point is, is really what this milestone entails. Yeah, I love that thought of extra cushion, but it's also actually directing your life's time in the manner that you so choose, right? Like that's mm -hmm. another way of looking at it. Like you chose to go to work and hopefully you're enjoying it. And maybe that goes back way back to the concept of FU money. I think FU money actually follows us all along this path. Yes. To me, FU money is not just a one point in time. It's constantly evolving because you get more say, right? You have more FU money all along the journey. And as you get farther down this line. And to, to make an analogy, the lean fi milestone is to the emergency fund, you know, the Dave Ramsey emergency fund, as this FI milestone is to the FU fund, right? So here we are including the discretionary. We're including your Netflix and your traveling. We're including all these things that might make your life more fun and more enjoyable. And so that's what you've got now. You've got this perpetual passive income that's going to support your lifestyle with all of the frills. This is the point, I think I say, where you've reached enough to, to quote your money or your life. One of the things that's so interesting is as you're on this path and you're checking off these milestones, I bet you the compelling draw of actually pulling the trigger on your fight date is 
intense. It's addictive. And and while I know you are feeling it more and more, I bet you right now, even though January 18th seems so extreme to all your family and friends, you want to make it September right now. And you're having yeah. to fight <laughs> to kick it back down the road like an extra six months because you know that you'll be okay to go ahead and do it right now. And yet you're still checking back in until January. And to you, it feels like restraint. And at the same time, I bet you that for Alexis, she's more and more feeling the pull of what you're doing. And although she says she's ramping down as it's getting closer, She's like, ah, oh, I think I should just, I think I should just pull the trigger too. Yeah, she is becoming more aware of the power that she has. And so the other day we were talking about that and she was saying, yeah, I'm going to stick with the program I'm on at work because I enjoy it. I enjoy the people and I enjoy what we're working on. But if they, let's say, decide to move me to another program that, that I don't like or, you know, another project that I don't enjoy, she, she knows like that's a card in her hand. She could just say, yeah, I'm done now. Yeah. And that is exactly what I was trying to get at a, a minute ago about FU money is, is yeah, that power just shifts and it just keeps shifting towards you. And that's a perfect way. Like you can pick and choose when you're at FI, you can pick and choose what you want out of your life and out of your job. There might be things about Alexis's job that she absolutely adores and she can go in if she reaches a point where she just can't do a hundred percent of it anymore. She just doesn't want to. She could go into her boss or the VP's office and say, hey, look, these are the things I love out of my job, and I really just can't do these other items anymore. That's a conversation that is impossible at negative net worth or even slightly positive net worth. But when you're at FI, that's a conversation that moves into the realm of plausibility very quickly. Yeah, and and choosing when you might pull that early retirement trigger, that's going to be specific to everybody on their journey, on their own individual journey, what makes sense for them and their family. But the way that I kind of show it here with these milestones is lean FI, flexify, um, FI, and even fat FI, all of those are perfectly viable times to test the waters of early retirement. You can pull that trigger at any time in that spectrum, given flexibility, and it's going to depend on, well, how much risk are you willing to accept? How, how much uh, flexibility do you have in your annual spend? And, and so everybody's situation is different there. But I think that's the power that I wanted to get across here is you've got this giant spread of hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's not a single dollar that you're reaching for. You know, I almost wish we could stop right here with this being the final milestone, just because that would be seven milestones and it would so perfectly contrast with the Dave Ramsey's. But because Phi is better in every single way, we're going to go ahead and do one more milestone. Joel, what is the eighth and final milestone of the Phi community? Sure. So this would be what I'm calling Fat Phi. And the idea here is that you've saved up 30x, 30 times your annual spending. So this would correspond to a safe withdrawal rate of, I think, 3.333%. And I believe Jim Collins calls this basically as close to a sure thing as anything you can ever get. So for people that really, they don't have a side hustle, they have no flexibility in their annual spend, they want that as close to 100% certainty of success as you can get to, this is it, right? So once you hit 30 times your annual spend, this is it. So so for us, that would be $750,000 in a portfolio generating $30,000 a year passively. And so for us though, we don't feel like we need to wait that long. I've got side hustles that I work on on the side. My wife has stuff that she works on. And so for us, this is overkill. But for some people, this might be right for them. If they don't want to ever count on a side hustle, they, they don't want to have to think about earning money. They want just a really low risk. Maybe they, they are just very risk averse. That's what the Fat Five Milestone is for. This is nothing like this has been done before. And this article was a game changer, I think. And this is a, an original idea. I don't think anybody has considered framing it this way. And I know that people have been looking for a way to document their progress and document their wins and give themselves something to check the box with. Because frankly, it's a wasteland until you get to FI, historically speaking. And this gives you an opportunity to say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. So, all right, Brad, which one are you in? Oh man, Jonathan, that is a, that's a hard question. I go back and forth on this all the time and you did just ambush me with this. I, I think for me, so the FlexFi is, is a very interesting concept because, because my wife does do basically seasonal accounting work. So that makes up basically a, a full third of our yearly expenses, if not more, it's probably closer to half. And I guess if you count, are we counting my online businesses in or out? Oh, yeah, I'd say that's in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joel, are they in? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's your side hustle, right? So that's that's part of it. Okay. Well, yeah, if they're in, then I will go on record as saying I'm at Fat Fi. Fat Fi. Get the t-shirt. Love it. <laughs> Which sounds, nice. Yeah, it sounds nice. crazy to say. I'm Without the businesses, I would, I'm probably, I would say I'm definitely between Flex Fi and Fi. I think depending on... Joel, I think you might have convinced me to be less conservative in my phi calculation. So, nice. yeah, we're we're I'd say inching close to to true phi here. That's great. I, I feel like I accomplished something. <laughs> yeah, this is no, it's awesome, man. I, and yeah. I'm gonna really really think about that question even more in depth and maybe get back to it on on our Friday roundup because I I, I feel like I'm not giving the perfect answer here. But yeah, I think I would say between flex phi and phi. I have to say congratulations. That's that is awesome. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and uh, being a lemming still, I am somewhere just after number two. So I am, I've gotten my personal capital phone call and I got my FU money locked up. So I am right in there. Yeah, you know, Jonathan, some of the feedback I got is that people wanted another milestone for that long journey till you hit half by. And so I made up, you know, quarter fi. So you might be close to quarter fi oh, at this point. I am, I'm quarter fi. A concept was introduced to me a while back uh, called by Slowly Sipping Coffee called the Fully Funded Lifestyle Change. And it implies that when you have a side hustle that has legs or you have a plan, it essentially it can empower you to pursue your passions earlier. And so I would say that I am at an intersection of quarter fi and FFLC currently. Nice. Sounds good. And we know where you are, Joel. So thank you so much for spending the time to create these and to come on the podcast and share them with us. You know, I think probably the final thing that we should do is talk about how do you celebrate when you go from one milestone to the next? What is yeah. what is your celebration of choice? Yeah, so for us, uh, what we've been doing lately is we will go to Aldi, which, you know, Brad, we're still waiting on your, <laughs> on your talk of, uh, of yep, Aldi. Yeah, my, my update will come, don't worry. <laughs> nice. But yeah, so we go to Aldi, we get some Aldi champagne, We'll get a bunch of good food, cook a big dinner, celebrate, maybe listen uh, listen to a Choose FI podcast if there's one out. Nice. <laughs> it's kind of our Friday night, you know, date night thing. But no, we'll, what we do is we we just try to have some fun and just really think about that milestone and what and what we've achieved. And I think that's the whole point of all of this is to keep you motivated and to realize the power that you have, like. Jonathan, even you at Quarterfy, uh, that power to take on more risk, to stand up for yourself at work, and, and to actually live life with more confidence. I think that's that's what it's all about. And that's what the celebration is for, is to say, wow, we just crossed another point. We've got more power. We can better weather any storm that's going to come at us in the future. And uh, so, yeah, that's what that's what we do. That's awesome. And can I say that I think that I will, I paid off my student loans. They're all gone, by the way. I don't know if I made a formal announcement on the podcast about that, but they are all gone. And I got to say, I think I will get, even though I thought I was going to get a huge kick out of being done with the student loans, I think that internally I will get a much better kick by checking off one of these milestones just because it feels like that was just to get, to get the financial freedom clock started. But that's when it begins. Once you get to that point, there's so much more than just being debt-free. Debt-free still has you in your nine to five. Pursuing FI allows you to take the time back and put it as a tool in your back pocket. And so I hope that to our community, as you have latched onto this concept, as you have now spoken to your spouse and gotten her on board, hopefully, or him on board, and as you are now teaching your kids about this concept, I hope that you can start getting excited about where you are on these milestones and that it gives you an achievable metric that you can hit as you follow us on this journey over the next two, five, 10, or 15 years. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we look forward to seeing you on the ride and on the other side. The fire is spreading, my friends, and we'll see you next time as we continue to go down the road less traveled. You've been listening to Choose FI Radio Podcast, where we help middle-class America build wealth one life hack at a time.